Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to Joyful Living and welcome to my spring cleaning episode. And it's probably not going to be what you think. And I'm really glad that you're here. So first of all, if you're new around here, hello, I'm Jen and I talk a lot on this channel about cleaning and organizing and I love those things. Well, I don't always love them, but I do love living in a clean and organized house. So those things are very important to me. However, this is the time of year where everybody starts talking about spring cleaning. Five tips to spring cleaning. How to spring clean your house in under a day. My best hacks for spring cleaning. And I just want to tell you, right now, I don't spring clean. Now here's the thing. If you are someone who loves spring cleaning and if you clicked on this video because you're like, finally, Jen's doing a spring cleaning video and I love spring cleaning. I want you to know from me to you that I am 100% okay with that choice. And as my favorite character from Schitt's Creek would tell you, I love that for you. I do not, however, love that for me. I spent decades raising kids and working full time outside of the home. And I would kill myself trying to do this thing called spring cleaning. And one year I finally decided I wasn't going to do it anymore and I have never looked back. So let's talk about for a minute, why do we spring clean? Where did this even come from? So I got on the internet and I did some research and what I found out is you can find references to spring cleaning going all the way back to Roman times. And people really linked it to the spiritual season of Lent because Lent is about forgiveness and cleansing and all of those things. And it's a fabulous season. I love Lent. However, it got associated with cleaning because somehow they decided that, you know, kind of cleanliness is next to godliness kind of thing, which by the way is not in the Bible, but that's a video for another day. Other people will tell you that spring cleaning, and this one actually is very practical, is all about opening the windows, letting in fresh air. Keep in mind that during the Victorian era, most homes were heated with coal. It was very messy, it was very dirty, and homes would literally have a layer of soot everywhere. So spring cleaning really was a hygienic necessity. Now today, thankfully, we do not heat our homes with coal. And although it is lovely to get the windows open and I'm all about airing out the space, we really have no practical need to deep clean our homes once a year like crazy people. And I'm going to give you my three top reasons why I don't do it. And then I'm going to tell you what I do instead. So the number one reason I don't do it is because it's exhausting and it makes me cranky. I am the chief cleaner in my home and it is not the people don't help me, but let's be honest, I am the project manager for all cleaning in this house. And so therefore it all falls on me. And some days the delegating is almost as exhausting as the actual doing. Those of you, go ahead and give this video a like. If that, that, is, that is the equivalency of an amen for this video is giving it a like. Because although my family pitches in, although no, I am not the only one who does the housework, sometimes you just get worn out from the asking and the nagging and the supervision and the following up and the project management. So I end up kind of getting myself exhausted. And what's worse, and this is years ago why I stopped doing it, I end up martyring myself. I end up saying, woe is me. Why do I do all the work around here and no one cares but me and I'm exhausted and you are all ungrateful. And it creates this kind of bad vibe that is not what I want in my home. And it just wears you out. So the exhaustion piece of it is the number one reason I don't do it. The number two reason I don't do it, and this has happened multiple years, and before you say, oh, it's because you're 50, I would like to tell you that I have had this happen in my 40s, in my 30s, and yes, even in my 20s. It's dangerous, y'all. When you go to spring clean, what you tend to do is scrub things and vacuum things and move furniture and flip mattresses, which by the way, I am a fan of, and you can go and watch my video where I did just that. But you try to do it all at once. And we're just not used to that. I just mopped our kitchen floor the other day and the whole next day my back was sore because I was using muscles that I don't use. And I work out almost every single day, but I don't mop my floor every single day. Maybe I should. Let's not talk about that. I have gotten 
physically injured spring cleaning my home. So when you add the fact that you tend to get kind of angry because no one's helping, and then you're spring cleaning, it, it kind of is this whole thing that lends itself to injury. And I wish I was kidding. I have sprained an ankle. I have fallen and scraped up my knee. I have hurt my wrist. I have hurt my back. It seriously can be a dangerous proposition. And anytime you're putting all this pressure on yourself to do these major physical projects and get it all done in a short period of time, it can really end up just making you not healthy and not well, and it's just not good for us. The number three reason I don't do it is I don't have time. Now, even now, when I work for myself, I mean, YouTube is my job. I don't have time to set aside an entire 12 hour day or an entire weekend to cleaning. And my guess is neither do you. So what you're doing is all those things that you do in the rest of your life, which by the way, you're already pretty stressed out. You are putting on the back burner so that you can do this big mammoth thing called spring cleaning. And it just ends up meaning that you have all of these sacrifices that you make in other areas of your life. And to me, I just don't think that's worth it. So you're asking, Jen, you've told us why you don't spring clean. What do you do instead? If you have watched any of my planning videos, you have probably seen in my planner on my daily habits, I have a category called zone cleaning. And here's what I do instead of spring cleaning. And I really, you need a, you need a pen and paper to write this down. This is a very big deal. I do it in small manageable bites. I have divided my house up into zones. This is not a difficult proposition. We've got bedrooms, we've got bathrooms, we've got other living spaces, and we've got the kitchen. And you can also add the garage on there. That's actually Scott's job. But if that's, you know, if you want to put the garage on there and I spread out those zones throughout the year. Once a week, I do a more thorough cleaning of one area in my home. So maybe, um, well, I can tell you this past week, it was the bathrooms and I just got done doing it this morning. In fact, I really scrubbed the tile. I really deep cleaned the bathrooms. And then once a month, I pick an area in the home to really deep clean. And this is typically when I will not only deep clean that area. So let's take, for example, the bathrooms. I'm also going to throw out things that I don't use anymore. I'm going to declutter. I'm going to maybe, you know, reassess my organizational systems, see if I want to do anything in there to make things run a little bit better. I'm going to look at, do I need to replace linens? Do I need to refresh the area at all? And by having it broken up into zones and focusing every week a little bit on one area, and then once a month, really focusing on one area, I work my way through my house and I actually write down in my planner. So this month, uh, the area of my home that I'm going to really deep dive and deep clean is my kitchen, which means I'm going to thoroughly clean the floor. Even though I, you know, do my weekly mopping, this is like a move everything really clean. I'm going to reevaluate what's in there, what needs to go, what can stay. I'm going to see if anything needs to be purchased. Do I need new dish towels? Do I need any new appliances? Is everything in good working order? I'm going to clean out the pantry. And yes, that is probably going to take me at least half of one full day. But because I do it that way, once a month, I'm spending the half of one full day, but I don't have this huge blitz where once a year I'm killing myself trying to get it all done at once. We've all heard that expression, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, which I've never really liked because why are we eating elephants? I think it really does hold true when it comes to our homes. We tend to think we can clean the entire thing thoroughly and well from top to bottom. And when you watch YouTube videos, it really can seem like it's achievable to do all of that in one full day or in a weekend. And I spent a lot of years beating myself up over what I could not accomplish. And now because I have it broken up into reasonable segments, I never feel behind. I always know that whatever area I'm working in, the next area is coming up in the next month. And we're in just this steady rotation of the areas in my home and everything gets done when it gets done. And what that enables me to do is spend my free time Time on these beautiful spring days, out enjoying the sunshine, out taking walks with my dogs, out sitting on my deck having a glass of wine, instead of being stuck inside 
spring cleaning. Okay, enough on that. I hope if you needed a release from spring cleaning that I just gave you permission to not do it this year and actually never do it at all. Thank you so much for being here. If you made it this far, I'm assuming you like this video, so please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you like what you see here, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to my channel. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.